All right, got the new streamer in. Let's go ahead and set it down right here. And let's take a look at the back, see what kind of connections we got. We've got digital and analog. Digital or analog? Oh digital no. What's the difference? Is one better than the other? What am I gonna choose? I don't know what to do here. What's the right answer? I don't want to deal with this today. Have you had this conundrum before when dealing with the two channel stereo system? Or perhaps you're just curious why these options even exist? Well, let's talk about it. As I hinted at in the intro, this video will be going over which outputs to use in a two-channel hi-fi stereo system, not a home theater. I will be going over that in an upcoming video, which is something you can look forward to? Sure. When it comes to two-channel stereo systems, both coax and Toslink, aka optical, can support uncompressed PCM audio signals. Which is great since I prefer not to have compressed audio signals. Get out of here, compression. Nobody wants you here. For this example, I have the new ST5 streamer and A25 integrated amplifier from the UK company RCAM. I received these beauties in partnership with eacoustics.com and you can check out the unboxings of these devices in the corner here or I have conveniently placed links in the description below. And be on the lookout on the eacoustics YouTube channel for a full review of the combination of these two bad boys coming soon. Now let's take a closer look at the back of these devices. The A25 in particular does not support Wi-Fi or music streaming and things like that. The ST5 is what you can connect your mobile device to wirelessly so you can stream your favorite music apps through it. But as you may know, that information is traveling wirelessly from your mobile device to the streamer in a digital form factor. Ones and zeros. And despite what your Uncle Larry says on his Conspiracy Theory podcast each week, we can't actually hear ones and zeros. So how do we actually hear a digital source? Well, that's what a DAC is for, a digital to analog converter. Analog consists of electrical signals. And when those ones and zeros are converted into electrical impulses inside an amp, they're sent through the speaker wire, which then causes the drivers inside this speaker to oscillate back and forth, creating waves of sound that propagate through the air, which our ears pick up. And finally, our brain interprets those disturbances in the air as sound. Wow. Science is dope AF, am I right? Yeah, no kidding. Now, for educational purposes, let's just say that this streamer is from 10 years ago, right? It's been around the block a few times, you can still cast your favorite music apps to it, etc. But the DAC inside is getting a little outdated. Sorry, hypothetical 10 year old streamer. It's okay, I guess. Well, since the DAC inside the A25 amp is incredible, an ESS Sabre ES9280A Pro DAC, in fact, you'll want to use its DAC for any digital to analog conversion. So we want only ones and zeros to go from the streamer to the amp. No analog conversion whatsoever. So how do we do that? By using the digital outputs on the streamer. Just FYI, since we're dealing with the transfer of digital information, there is no difference between the coax and optical outputs as far as quality is concerned. But maybe you already have an RCA patch cable lying around the house, so obviously in that case you'd want to go with coax out. Also, I prefer to use digital coax cables over optical if given the option because Digital coax is definitely a lot more durable than optical. Optical cables use pulses of red light to send the digital signal so they can be ruined if they're accidentally bent a little too much, and even the connections on the components can break pretty easily over time. Just my two cents on the matter. But back to the digital outputs, I simply go from the digital coax output on the streamer to the digital one coax input on the amp and select digital one as my input in the menu. Yay! Now I can be sure that I'm getting the highest quality possible because I am using the best deck. 
Now, conversely, let's say you have a CD player that you've had for decades and you just love the sound that it produces. Certain DACs have a certain sound. So if you prefer that sound, then you probably want to have it do any digital to analog conversion. And then use the amp to simply, well, amplify the signal going to the speakers. So in that case, let's just pretend that this is the CD player in question. You would go from the analog out of the CD player, like so, right and left channels, and go into the analog input of the amp, like so. And then just choose the corresponding analog input in the menu. Ta-da! Typically, you're going to want to go with the DAC that is newer and better, but there are scenarios where you just like that DAC's sound better, even though it may be older. And there is no shame in that. And that pretty much covers it, folks. When dealing with digital or analog outputs, it all comes down to the DAC. Whether you prefer newer and more modern, or perhaps you just prefer a more vintage sounding DAC. Also, I am 100% not being paid to say this, but since this was brought to you by a partnership with them, please visit eacoustics.com where I also personally keep up on all things hi-fi and audio, computers, gadgets, and emerging tech. And don't forget to follow them on social media for even more bite-sized content while on the go. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies and listen to incredible music, experience it. And of course, always be listening.